phenomenal. Yes. You see I have my Margaret Owens fan club <laughs> t-shirt on. I think you're awesome. Yes. And what a perfect song. It's exactly what I'm talking about, that we listen to that heart calling and we are free. You know, every single one of us is here on earth by divine appointment to give way to our greatest self, to give birth to our greatest self, and to allow that divine presence to express itself through us as magnificence. That's what we're here for, to give birth to our greater selves. And what that means then is that we, we each, have this continuous need inside of us to unfold our greater selves. We have this continuous need to expand and to unfold ourselves and to expand our own experience of life. We have a need, a soul need, to unfold who we are in potential, to unfold that untapped potential of creativity and of love and of wholeness and of power and of beauty. In short, we are here to unfold our greatness and to bring that into the world. That is a soul calling that we each have, the call of our spirit, the call of the divine that lives within us. And so one of the ways that we do that, that we give way to that greater self, that we bring that forward in the world, is by listening to and heeding the call of our soul-felt, heartfelt longings. Those dreams and desires, the dreams that we have to do something or to be something in this world. And so that might be the desire to have a love relationship or to have a new job or to have a new project, to do a new project at the job where you're working right now. It might mean to buy a new home or even just to redecorate or remodel the home that you're living in right now. It might look like wanting to get a dog or the desire to travel or the desire to make art, or learn a new skill, or even just to get better at a skill that, you're, that you already do right now. It could be something as simple as wanting to be a better parent, to parent with greater peace and with more flexibility. All of those things are those heartfelt longings and desires we have, and they're desires of our soul those are the dreams that I'm talking about. And so we all have those dreams. And you know, I don't know if this is a common dream or not, but when I was a kid, I used to have this dream all the time that I was falling out of this really tall tree, only to discover that it was really the babysitter had thrown me out the window. <laughs> but that's not really the kind of dreams I'm talking about, but we know those ones also. Me neither, not really. <laughs> and so those dreams and those heartfelt desires that we have are the way that we give way to that greater yet to be, to our own greater yet to be. Those are the ways that we unfold that untapped potential by following those dreams and those desires. That's how we give way to our greater self and to our greatness. And so Ernest Holmes, who is the founder of this philosophy in the Science of Mind textbook, speaks to this. He says, anything that will enable us to express greater life, greater happiness, greater power, so long as it does not harm anyone, must be the will of God for us. He also says, Know that the greater abundance of every good thing which you are bringing out in your life, the more perfectly you are satisfying the divine urge within you. Anything you can dream of is not too great for you to undertake if it hurts no one and brings happiness and good into your life. Those things are the divine desiring through us, and that's the way we unfold. And then the second way that that need to unfold, that need to unfold that greatest yet to be, shows up in wanting to live with a sense of purpose in our lives. 
Because when we are in touch with that sense of purpose, whatever our purpose is for being here, and that purpose changes, but whatever your purpose is at this point in your life right now, being in touch with that purpose puts you in touch with your soul. And so part of my purpose in this lifetime is to be a minister. Because what that purpose looks like inside of me as I am here to walk this spiritual path and to have this realization of spirit. And as part of that, I am here to share my understanding of that truth with you in a way that makes your life better, in a way that makes your life richer from understanding what I say so that you can apply it to your own life. I also have a heartfelt longing and desire and sense of purpose about creating beauty in this world, about sharing and using my creativity. And that shows up in hairdressing, and it shows up in my love of decorating and gardening and making things beautiful. That's how I live out that sense of purpose that lives inside of me. And all of those things bring me tremendous joy when I'm doing them. And that is how we know when we're on purpose. Because whatever it is that we are doing that is on purpose in our lives, it brings us joy. It feels fulfilling. It feels satisfying. It makes life rich. And not just that, but the other thing is it contributes somehow to the betterment of somebody or something that is greater than us. Those two components, it feels satisfying and it feels good, it makes us feel alive, and it contributes. That's being on purpose. And so it could simply look like raising children to be productive adults in this world to make the world a better place. It could be teaching people skills so that they thrive in life. It could be teaching children so that they have really good lives. It could be working as a nurse because in doing that, you help people heal and you get to share your care. It could be programming computers because that makes people's lives easier. It doesn't matter what it is that you do. What matters is that it feels fulfilling to you, that it feels satisfying to you, and that it is a catalyst to unfold your greatness to unfold that greater yet to be that lives inside of you. And so those dreams and desires that we have then are the way that we unfold our greater selves and the way that we unfold the almighty, all good, all love, all beingness through us into this world. That's how we give way to that presence. It unfolds through us. And so the title of my talk today is Unfurl Your Sails. And I'm talking about unfurling our sails of passion and of purpose so that the divine may fill them up and move us through life into our most satisfying life. And so then what happens is we must ask ourselves, what is it that makes my heart sing? What is it that makes me feel alive? What is it that I feel joy about? What do I feel passionate about? What is really deeply important to me? And then you go and you do that. That's living on purpose. And so I read a story this week that goes like this. John W. Gardner, who is the founding chairman of Common Cause, says it's a rare and high privilege to help people understand the difference they can make, not only in their own lives, but also in the lives of others, simply by giving of themselves. Gardner tells of a cheerful, cheerful old man who asked the same question of just about every new acquaintance he fell into conversation with. What have you done that you believe in and are proud of? He never asked the conventional question, what do you do for a living? It was always, what have you done that you believe in and that you are proud of? It was an unsettling question for people who had built their self-esteem on their wealth and their family name and their exalted job title. Not that the old man was a fierce interrogator. He was delighted by a woman who answered, I'm doing a good job raising three children. 
and by a cabinet maker who said, I believe in good workmanship and practice it. And by a woman who said, I started a bookstore and it's the best bookstore for miles around. He says, I don't really care how they answer. I just want to put the thought into their minds. They should live in such a way that they have a good answer. Not a good answer for me, but a good answer for themselves. That's what's important. Because each and every single one of those things is living with soul purpose. It's making a difference. It's bringing their greatest selves into the world. That, each one of those things, is following their bliss. And then there's a second thing that we can do to heed that call of our soul to unfold our greatest selves, to live out that full to potential, and to bring that greatness in the world. And that means to listen within when something doesn't fit. We all have had those times in our lives when we know there's this unsettledness inside of us, this thing that just doesn't feel right, that something in our lives doesn't fit, that it's not right, that we've outgrown it. Maybe it's a relationship that you're in, and the relationship is diminishing to you somehow or keeping you small. Or maybe it's a job that you've outgrown at one time, it served you because you got to share your skills, but now your skills and way of being in the world are so much bigger than this that there is something where you could use those in a much more satisfying and fulfilling and expansive way. It's that nagging feeling that something isn't right, that feeling of malaise, that feeling of a low-grade frustration or that pit in your stomach. I know that I've had it before, and I don't always listen to it, and it doesn't go away. Those feelings of dissatisfaction, I call it divine discontent, that is your soul trying to move you into a greater expression, into a greater experience of life. That is the call for your expansion and the call for you to be who you've really come here to be on this planet. Dr. Michael Beckwith says, we are either pulled by a vision or we are pushed by pain. We're pulled by the vision to be something more and to do something more. And if we don't listen, we're pushed by the pain of those feelings that don't feel really good inside of us. And you all know if you don't listen, at some point you get hit by the spiritual two by four. And that means that it shows up as getting sick or having a major illness. <laughs> It shows up as getting depressed or having an accident or getting fired, but it takes something big sometimes to get our attention when we don't listen to that nagging feeling inside of us that this doesn't fit. It's not for you. And I know the thing that stops us from moving out of those things that don't fit or the thing that stops us from following those dreams and those desires and that sense of purpose sometimes is fear. Fear that we aren't going to know how to do it. Fear of the unknown. Fear that we're not capable of it. Fear of failure. Fear that maybe we're going to have to change and be something more or something more is going to be required of us if we move into this life. All those things are really fear of the unknown. One of my favorite quotes from Dr. Ernest Holmes is, that fear is a lie and a fraud because it denies the divine presence. When we get into fear, we are forgetting that that infinite presence is right where we are and that it carries us and that it buoys us and that it has its way through us as the solution, as the way, as the skill, as whatever it is that we need. The fear denies that the divine is present in our life. It's not true. Fear is of your ego. Your ego thinks it's separate and apart and distinct and all by itself, and it's not true. Your soul calls you to more. And so that desire for the more is that universal love intelligence desiring through us. The dreams and the desires are the divine desiring through us as our means of unfolding. 
it's inviting us into a greater life. And so we're doing the class right now, Spiritual Fitness, and Carolyn Reynolds wrote the book that goes along with the class called Spiritual Fitness. And she says in that book, putting off living your soul's true purpose can only make you unhappy because true happiness depends on your living honestly and at a soul level. When we're living at a soul level, that's when we feel happiest. That's when we feel most satisfied. And so where do we begin? How do we begin? I think we begin by asking ourselves, what is my deepest heartfelt desire? And why is that important to me? And how will that make me feel when I have it, when I've accomplished it? And when you get clear about that, you ask yourself, what is the next step to take? Not how do I get from here to here, not how do I get from A to Z, but what's the next step that I need to take to get me there? And so let's do that right now. I invite you to close your eyes. To close your eyes and just to settle into that absolute wisdom that is right at the center of your being. It's the wisdom of your soul. It's the wisdom of your spirit. It's the call of the divine within you to live your greatest life and to ask that place within you, what is my deepest heartfelt desire? What is my deepest heartfelt desire? To ask, what is most important to me? What is most important to me? And to ask yourself, why is this thing important to me? And when I bring that deepest heartfelt desire into physical reality here, how will I feel? And what is the next step that I need to take towards that goal? What is the very next step? And I invite you to open your eyes. Life is a spiritual journey. All of life is a spiritual journey. And you know what? Even if you never reach that goal, even if you change your mind midway and decide you want to do something else, every single step that you take serves you. Every single step you take toward that goal serves your unfolding. It serves your greater expression. It serves your greater experience of life and of who you are. It enables you each step to discover who you are and to create who it is that you want to be. That's my favorite idea from Donald Walsh in Conversations with God. He says the reason we have incarnated on this planet is to discover who we are, capital who we are and to create who, capital who, we want to be in this world. Every step you take towards that goal enables you to discover who you are and to create who you want to be. It serves your soul and serves your unfolding and serves your self-discovery. And so Ernest Holmes speaks to that. He says, 
The inherent nature of man is forever seeking to express itself in terms of freedom. We do well to listen to this inner voice, for it tells us of a life wonderful in its scope, of a love beyond our fondest dreams, of a freedom which the soul craves. The freedom to create the life of our dreams. The freedom to live our soul's purpose. The freedom to create our greatest life that we can ever imagine. And so pursue those inner longings. Pursue those heartfelt dreams. Pursue your greatest life. Follow your heartfelt dreams. Unfold your greatness. Unfold your spiritual magnificence. And if you get afraid, afraid that you don't have what it takes or that you're not going to be able to make it or afraid of the unknown, use soul-level thinking. That means see from the place of truth within you. Remind yourself that your desires are the universe desiring itself through you. Therefore, everything that you could need is already available in that presence. Remind yourself that God is for you, and that means life is for you. Remind yourself that you are here to express your greatest self, to express that infinite one through you. Remind yourself that you cannot fail because every single step you take is a success. Remember those things and then you'll be creating your absolutely most fulfilling life and living on purpose and unfolding your greatest self. And so blessings to each and every single one of you as you walk this path of unfolding and of remembering and creating the life of your heartfelt desires. Blessings to all of you. And so I invite you to join me in an affirmative prayer. And so we take our attention and turn it to that realm of truth, to that infinite presence that is right here in this room. Closer than breath and near than hands and feet, that one that resides within our hearts, that resides at the center of our being, that is the very essence and the core of who we are as spiritual beings. That we are, yes, indeed, incarnations of this most high one. Incarnations of creativity and of love and of this life energy. Incarnations of infinite potential. And that, yes, we are here on planet Earth giving way to this one in a way that feels like a blessing to us and in a way that blesses those around us. And so, yes, today we listen to that call of our heart, the call of our soul to bring our greatest selves to life, to share ourselves in whatever way we are called to do to share our unique gifts and talents and soul longings and dreams and desires to become those in this world. And so I know that we are right now lifted and carried and buoyed by that infinite one, that infinite potential, that boundless good, that all possibility, all power, all love, the all in all that permeates everything is right here, closer than breath and nearer than hands and feet. It is going before us and unfolding the way and making it plain and smooth and easy to live out these heartfelt longings, for this is the call of the divinity within us. And so, yes, I know that our paths are already blessed and that we are a blessing in everything that we do. I know that the windows of heaven are open and pouring out a blessing into our lives at this moment. How good it is to be living this life, to be walking this path, to be saying yes to the divine within us and to be bringing ourselves forward into life in this most magnificent way. And so I give thanks for this 
unfolding life for all of the opportunities, all of the openings, all of the coincidences and the way that this dream and heartfelt longing shows up, knowing that it is already blessed. And so I release this prayer into that creative womb of the universe, knowing that it is already done, simply because we have said yes, and simply because it is the truth. And so we ground ourselves and anchor ourselves in this truth, and we simply relax and allow it to unfold in all of its perfection. And I say thank you, God, for this. And so it is.